Can anyone guess the movie scene I just reenacted? No. Well, this, this was Mary Poppins jumping into a chalk drawing, and by doing so, embarking on a psychedelic adventure with dancing penguins and merry-go-rounds gone wild. Now you remember, right? For as long as I remember, I have been obsessed with this movie scene. Not because of those dancing penguins, but because of the concept of jumping into an alternative reality with such ease. And the pursuit of that concept became the number one motivation throughout my professional journey. When you ask me what I do for a living, today I guess the most fitting label would be immersive storytelling. I know that sounds like a buzzword and one that heavily relies on technology, but it really isn't. In essence, Immersive storytelling is defined as a technique which transports interactors into different times, places, and realities. In that definition, Mary Poppins could very well be considered an immersive storyteller avant la lettre. And the cool thing is, she didn't need a single piece of technology in the process. Just her storytelling skills and the imagination of the bank's children, her audience, on the other hand. With this simple equation, story and imagination in mind, I started my pursuit of jumping into the drawing by drawing. Later on, I added writing to the recipe. At one point, probably considered throwing some mushrooms in the mix until 15 years ago, a new and rather unexpected ingredient sneaked its way into my recipe in progress. I met this really charming guy. Today, this charming guy is both my husband and co-founder of our studio. But back then, in all honesty, we were a rather unlikely match. Try and imagine our first conversation and the moment that landed on our professional whereabouts. Yes, yeah, so um, what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm a, I'm a writer. Oh, cool. Um, I'm a creative technologist. Long pause and lots of question marks. Now, against all odds and question marks, he was very handsome. We started texting and dating. The awkwardness continued. Um, just picture us trying to schedule a night out. Hey, there's this really nice poetry reading happening tonight. Shall we go? Or how about we stay in, cuddle up under a blanket and watch Star Trek? together. Sure, sounds interesting. I mean, I did mention he was very handsome, and at least his proposal involved a blanket. About five dates and 12 episodes into our Star Trek marathon, I was first introduced to the concept of a holodeck. Now, for those of you who have never been forced into a similar romantic binge situation, a holodeck is um, sort of a recreational room where starship residents, in between missions, got to live out their wildest fantasies. They could teleport to whichever time, place and situation they imagine, with a little help from sci-fi technology. I became equally if not more obsessed with this holodeck as I had been with Mary Poppins. And I slowly started warming up to the idea of both this guy and me, and perhaps even adding a little technology to my recipe. Now, the thing with warming up to new technologies is 
they have this very annoying tendency to cool down before you understand them, let alone grasp their full potential. Take the metaphors. Depending on the perspective, it is both yesterday's and tomorrow's news. Today, artificial intelligence dominates the hype cycle and all of our news feeds. And who knows what will be on the menu next week. Frustrating, yes. Paralyzing, no. It shouldn't be. All tech-induced evolution aside, storytelling is a timeless skill. A superpower, actually. The one superpower that made us human beings the mightiest of all animals. As a great Yuval Noah Harari described in his book Sapiens, it was our storytelling tradition and our imagination that united us as a species into accomplishing amazing things. And these two ingredients, story and imagination, they were the real game changers in the course of evolution. Innovations like fire, weapons and wheels, yeah, they were merely tools along the way. So, yes, new innovations can and will make our work easier. It will speed up our process and it will help us, all of us, in achieving our goal of making audiences jump into the picture. But everything still starts, and always will, with one's ability to paint that picture in the first place. And that, for now, is an exclusive human skill. So let's not be intimidated by every new tech kit on the block. Let's not have it define, or even worse, devalue our own creative identity or that of the people we work with. Instead, let's see how we could turn it into a tool, a tool to help us along the way, just like fire, weapons, and wheels. And last but not least, when you find yourselves in a room, like tonight, surrounded by other people, other professionals, go and greet those comfort zone colleagues. Say hi to the familiar faces, but then try and start a conversation with the most unlikely match in the room. Because that one person just might be your missing ingredient. That one person just might be your future sparing partner in crime, just like Mary Poppins and her chimney sweeper, just like me and my creative technologist. And that initial conversation, however awkward, just might end up making the difference between a lifetime of jumping from one existential crisis into the next or jumping into the drawing. <laughs>